right, fantastic. If you have a Bible, go ahead and turn to Genesis chapter 12. <clears throat> Genesis chapter 12. We have been in this series now. We've just started it, really. And, you know, a couple of things I want you to, to, to understand uh, about this particular. The reason I'm so excited about sharing it with you is that it's, <clears throat> there's, a, there's a parallel that goes with this. You know, the scripture, the scripture teaches, you know, that, that, you know, Abraham's the foundation. It's the promises that God gave Abraham, right, that were going to eventually be fulfilled in who Christ is, what he came to do, which eventually was going to make the difference in our lives, right? And, uh, and so, but the parallel goes with this, right? <laughs> that, that basically Abraham, God, God gave him his word, I want you to leave your family, right, from the Ur of the Chaldees, and I want you to go to a land that, that I promised to you, the promised land, right? And so I want you heading that way, and I want you to go there. I'm not going to show you. I'm not going to tell you where, but you just follow me. We'll get there. And Abraham did. So it, it, was, it presented someone trusting God's word. And <clears throat> therefore, in the beginning was the word. Jesus is and also known as God's word, right, incarnate, that kind of thing. And so putting our faith and trust in his word, the gospel message, who Christ is, those things, it, the parallels are really unmistakable. So then it last week represented, you know, Abraham becoming a believer, right? It says in Romans that Abraham believed God, that is, he trusted God, and God credited it to him uh, as righteousness. And so when you think on on this, this journey then that goes afterwards. The parallel is though, is that those of you that are his, right? Those of you that are, 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 put your faith and trust in his message, then it's for you, right? And a lot of the things <laughs> that, that Abraham is going to deal with are going to be directly for you to learn and understand what it means to be his follower. So remember here that, <clears throat> that Abraham was in Canaan and he was living there and it was, it was God's, he was following the Lord, but then God was working in, in Abraham's life, tr uh, teaching him to trust him. Abraham, Abraham became this, this great figure, right? He almost, if you wanna call a hero, Talk a little bit more about that in a minute. But one of the great heroes of the faith, if you will, the father of the faith, whatever you want to call it. And, um, and so, but I want you to see that he had a lot of failures along the way. But it was the failures that caused him to grow and to learn and to learn to trust God. So God's at work, right? Uh, he, who has <coughs> he who has begun a good work in you, the scripture says, will continue it. It's his responsibility to work in your life. So you're gonna see the first one here, right? And the title for today is Dealing with Doubt. And that's something that you're going to deal with. And, and you're gonna fail here, right? Just like Abraham today fails, right? But it's the failure that teaches you, uh, that teaches you to, 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 to grow, right? You know, this is going to be this is going to be one of those one of those things of, of learning to trust God. So so if you want to take some notes, all right, there, we're not going to cover a whole lot of verses today, but you'll see in them they're pretty they're pretty amazing. All right, all right. Number one is that Abraham's faith is tested. All right, his faith is tested. Right? Yeah, you know, I think Warren Wiersbe said, if you, you know, faith that can't be tested can't be trusted. But a test reveals things, right? A test reveals what's there. Therefore, teachers, right, give tests. And it reveals what the students know and what they've learned, right? Now, I have, you know, it is true. You know, I was never a big fan of tests in school. But if we never had any tests, I can promise you that a younger Jeff Parrish wouldn't have learned anything. Does that make sense? Therefore, a test tells you 
if you're, it tells you what's there. So sometimes God will put a test in your life, not to reveal to him, he already knows, but to reveal to you where you are, right? And the great thing about the Lord is that after you fail, he doesn't throw you aside. He just re-enrolls you in the same class again, right? And you'll keep, you'll keep being in that class until you pass, right? Until you grow. His desire, he's patient. Yeah, that's one of the great virtues. And <clears throat> he, is, he, is, he is at work. He is at work in you for those things. And it is, it is a wonderful thing to think about. Well, let's see what happened to, to Abraham and how God tested, how God gave Abraham a test here. In chapter 12, verse 10, it says this. And there was a famine in the land. And at the end, it said that the famine was, was severe. Now, a couple of things just for you to realize is that you can be exactly where God wants you to be and there be major troubles, right? There's this false belief that if you're in God's will that there's never gonna be any problems, right? It's just not the truth. And it's not backed up by what the scriptures say at all. So, <clears throat> so when you take a look then, right? That there was a famine in the land, but God had led him here. And then, and then now there's a famine and so sometimes the doubt says, God, why would you bring me here if you knew there was a famine coming, right? And so all these things, this doubt stuff flies through your mind. And guys, growing in your faith is not one of those, you know, oogly googly type sayings that spiritual people say. It's a reality, and it's not always easy, right? Lord, I wanna grow in my faith. Okay, it's a dangerous prayer. Because usually that means he's gonna to have to put you in a situation where you're gonna to have to trust him. And usually that situation, the, the more it teaches you, probably the more perilous it would be, the situation. And that's never fun. In fact, I look back on it pers <coughs> personally, and I just know that through my journey, it's the famines that have taught me the most. It's just the truth. Uh, the prosperous times, you know, it's a battle, believe it or not. But the most, the most thing, the things that I've learned the most have come through figuratively through these times of famine. All right. So, so what did Abraham do? Of course, I know his name now is Abram. God will change it later, but if I keep calling him Abraham, I, I do understand that. You don't have to write me, all right? So, so Abram, all right, Abraham, he decided that he'd go to Egypt. All right now, notice here that nowhere in the scriptures does it say, "And the Lord said, go to Egypt." Just earlier, in the, just, just earlier in the chapter, it had said, okay, I want you to leave your family and your kin and I want you to go to a land I'm going to show you. And so Abraham believed God and he left. But this is not what this is. This is Abraham being fearful that if I stay here, what's going to happen? So he begins to figure out what he thinks is best and goes that direction. Now, a normal world. That's so how everybody does. But God, God, this is, you're not normal if you're his, right? It's, it's, it's your desire is to follow what he wants, not what you think you can come up with. But you have to walk and follow him a while before you start thinking that way. And I'm not here to teach it to you like that. That's his job. My, my thought here is just to share with you how it might look, right? And usually it always looks different than you thought it was going to. I love that verse, a man plans his way, but God guides the steps, all right? You, know, you can plan this big, long, nice five-year plan, whatever. I have found that 
any plan past six months is many times a waste of time. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? If you're following him, because you can plan, but in reality, you're following him. And the things he wants to teach you, you have to learn to trust him, especially <laughs> when it seems to be going in a direction that doesn't make sense. Okay, i.e. number one, right? Abraham was promised he was gonna be the father of many nations. You're gonna find out he doesn't have any kids. And it doesn't make sense, God, it doesn't make sense what you're doing, right? but can you trust him when it doesn't make sense? You're gonna see this throughout Abraham's life, <clears throat> which is a fantastic thing for you and I to learn. Because more than likely, it's not going to be a path that you would, you would think. It's an incredible thing. That's why the, my former pastor used to call it the romance of being a follower, is because you never know what's around the next corner. If your life is predictable, then more than likely you're not following him. If you've read the scriptures, right? <laughs> because you never know what he's going to do. Boy, that one came out of nowhere. I love it when I hear myself say that because generally that means that he was in it because I couldn't have dreamed it up myself. So as you think down there, but, but Abraham, Abraham heads there. <clears throat> the only verse that we're gonna talk about today outside the Genesis in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 6. I just want you to see it about this whole idea of, of tests, right? It says, uh, in this rejoice, Peter says, though now for a little while, if necessary, uh, you have been grieved by various trials, all right? So that, here we go, the tested genuineness of your faith. Tested genuineness. Genuine means the real thing, not the faked thing that you see so often today among the religious crowds, but a genuine trust in who the Lord is. Not one that's just for show, but it's one that you live by. This is what we're talking about. A tested, that means it's strong because the tests have you probably failed several times, and therefore it's tested, therefore it's working. It's actively working, right? It, it's just, when you understand how all the scriptures, it just really fits together, right? So that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes, though it, <coughs> though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor to Christ, to the revelation of Christ. So praise, glory, and, gl praise, glory, and honor are the, are, are, are the reasons, the goals, right? It's, it's wonderful to think on, right? This, this test, right? Now, number two, Abraham makes wrong decision. And the problem with wrong decisions is that they usually lead to other wrong decisions, right? And you're gonna, you're gonna see that that happens to him here. All right, let's take a look in Genesis chapter 12. Look at verse 10 again, all right? So it says here that, that Abraham went to, uh, there was a famine in the land, so he went to Egypt uh, to sojourn, which just means to live there. For the famine was severe in the land. Now look at verse 11. And when he was about to enter Egypt, he said to Sarai, all right, which her habitual name should be changed to Sarah. So we'll, talk, <coughs> we'll talk about that later, right? He says, I know that you are a woman beautiful in appearance, right? And when the Egyptians see you, they're gonna say, this is his wife. And they're gonna kill me so they can have you. So just tell them you're my sister. Really? Okay, guys, <laughs> this is Abraham. This is the father of our faith, right? Is what the scriptures would call him. This is the guy that it all began. Listen, Abraham was not a perfect man, right? He just wasn't, right? And fear got the best of him here. Because you want to know what, right? He, he moved to Egypt because, <coughs> because of his own fear, 
which led him into situations that caused him to start scheming, which caused him to all kinds of problems. <laughs> so basically just tell him you're my sister that it may go well with me because of you. All right? And this is classic here. And that my life may be spared, obviously, Sarah, for your sake. I mean, you get it what it's saying. Sometimes if you just read the scriptures slow enough, it, it has some real comedy to it, right? And it really makes sense that Abraham, remember this, <coughs> he's just at the beginning of his journey. He's got, he's got lots to learn. That's why I've always tried to tell people, make real sure who you, who, who you make heroes in your life especially in the spiritual arena. Because if you, if you make a hero of them, they're gonna disappoint you. Why? Because they're sinners just like you and God's still working in their life and they're gonna fail. How many times have I seen people who have put their faith and trust in, you know, in speakers and in people on TV and whatever else only to have their faith dashed because this person fails, right? But if your faith fails, it's because it's been in the wrong thing. Your faith has to be in him. If it's on anything or anybody else, it eventually is gonna disappoint you. And then you're gonna be struggling and even begin doubting who God is in your life because this person has failed. Well, you're gonna find out at the beginning, Abraham failed a whole bunch, right? <coughs> he, just, he just needed to learn to trust God, right? It, but he, has, he hadn't learned it. He, he'd already made the first step, which a lot of folks have made of putting their faith and trust in who Christ is and what he came to do. And then he's made the difference in your life Everything's changed. It doesn't mean that, you've, that you, you, you've overcome everything, right? And so this is just one of the first. You're gonna see several along the way. But I tell you what, by the, by the end of his life, right? Toward the end of his life, Abraham had learned to trust God completely, but not because it was innately there, because it was because God was actively at work in his life teaching him to trust him. Anybody who has a strong faith, all that tells me is that God has really worked in your life to teach you to trust him. And usually it's probably you've been through a whole lot of famines, right? And there's never a famine that is so scary as the first one. Right? It's like hurricanes here, guys, right? Those of you that are brand new to Florida, you'll freak out in the next one that comes but the rest of us don't even get out of a bed unless it's more than a category one, all right? I mean, seriously, everybody else is freaking out. We don't, because we've been here, we've learned. When you learn to follow who the Lord is, the first tough situation is the time you'll freak out the most, right? But then as you grow, you learn to trust. So <clears throat> decision-making, all right? I'll just share with you a couple of things that led to some bad decisions here. All right, number one <coughs> is, <coughs> is that he moved from trusting to scheming, All right? Now, if you want another word for scheming, manipulation could be filled in there. Therefore, uh, God, I kind of know what your will is here, so I'm gonna fix it to where it's going to work. The number of times people say to me, well, I just knew it had to be God's will because, and then I hear all of the scheming they did around it to make it happen. Again, I can't make the judgment call, but guys, if you really wanna know, you really wanna know, are you scheming? Are you manipulating? If you are, probably God's not in it. Probably, I say. Because I've learned if you have to make it happen, why couldn't God just make it happen if that's what he wanted? Anyway, it's just something for you. These are things for you to think about as a believer today <coughs> and understanding <coughs> what it means, if you follow. Anyway, so Abraham was trusting God, but <clears throat> as soon as he headed 
south and showed up in Egypt, he began scheming. Okay, now tell her you're my sister and hey, maybe we can work this and do that, all right? <clears throat> when any, anything is ever based on a lie, it, it rarely ends well. Now listen, it may go well for a while, but it never ends well. So you'll find out here in a minute, it goes well for a while, right? Many of you, you don't have to raise your hand here, but how many of you know what a Ponzi scheme is? All right, you got it? A Ponzi scheme is basically a lie, right? But it looks real good on the outside, right? But as always, it is doomed to failure because there's no truth in it. Does that make sense to everybody in the room? So when, when you have to manipulate or scheme, which is just another word, <coughs> word for a fancy lie, then you're, you're, you're just waiting for problems to happen, which is exactly what happened to Abraham, right? Number two, these are just things for you to think on. Number two, is that he moved from confidence to fear. Let me tell you this, fear rarely makes good decisions. When people are scared, you can get them to do just about anything, right? You can about talk them into anything. We've seen it during this time. A lot of people are scared. But remember this, as a believer, if you can learn not to make decisions if you're struggling with fear, you'll be glad, right? It's just, <coughs> it's just the way it works. It's just, the, it's just, it's just how, in fact, I've always tried to tell people, hey, listen, right now, if you can just hang on and wait till some of this anxiety dissipates a little bit so you can see clear, and then I promise you'll make a better decision. Because these are only things you learn as you do them. And I can sit here and tell you about this all the time, but there's a big difference from sharing it with you and, and, and acting on it and living it, right? Right? Now, number three, he moved from being <coughs> others-oriented, other-centered to being self-centered. If you notice, that's that one where it said, now, Sarah, Sarah, the reason we're doing this is for your benefit. But in reality, it was all about himself. So when you start, as a believer now, guys, I'm not talking about the rest of the world, but as a believer, right? Whenever we start this direction too, you can pretty much bet it's gonna backfire. Why? Because God is at work. Because God is at work, right? And he's at work to do those things. All right. Other-centered to self-centered. So as we take a look then, uh, then those decisions that he makes, number three, number three, is that Abraham went from being a blessing to being a, a curse. All right. What does that mean? Well, we've already talked about this, right? We've already talked about how God had made a promise is that through him, he would bless the whole world. So, so Abraham being a follower of God was to be a blessing to the world. But what happens is when he started going in wrong directions, his, his blessing them, he started being a curse. Let's see what we mean. Genesis chapter 12, verse 14. It says, when, when Abram entered Egypt, <clears throat> the Egyptians saw that the woman, Sarah, <clears throat> was beautiful. And when the princes of Pharaoh, now who are the princes? Who's Pharaoh? He's the king of Egypt. It just has a different name. The princes were his sons. So the princes came to dad and said, hey, dad, there's this, <laughs> there's this good looking woman who just showed up today. Right, and you need to see her, right? And when he and and they praised her, right? And the woman Sarah was was taken into Pharaoh's house, right? <clears throat> Look at verse sixteen. And for her sake, he dealt well with Abram, right? <clears throat> he gave he gave him sheep and oxen and male donkeys and male servants and female servants and female donkeys and 
camels. I mean, he, he got all this stuff. So at first, his little scheme, it looks like it's working, right? I, I found that in this particular case, you can either fail miserably or you can succeed even more miserably. For those of you who have ears to hear, that's the direction, right? And so he thought, <coughs> he thought things were working out. Look, see, this is gonna be okay, right? Now, if you like to write in your Bible, so if you have a paper Bible, if you know what that is, if you have a paper Bible, I want you to underline this phrase, female servants, we'll come to it again at the end. If you have one of these, the other gadgets, if you have a way to highlight it, highlight it, because I want to come back at the end. But what happened? Look at verse 17. Well, the Lord stepped in, okay? No, this is not how it's going to be, Abraham. And the Lord stepped in and afflicted Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sarah, Abram's wife. Now, plagues. So remember this, okay? Abraham, began, he became the curse, not the blessing, right? All because of some really bad decisions. I don't know. I, <laughs> I find it amazing when I looked at, when I look at it and, and trying to understand, you know, Abraham's directions and how he learns but again, you'll, you'll see later down in his life is that his fear turns to courage. Um, his scheming turns to, you know, God, we're gonna see how you work this one out. We're gonna trust that. I mean, it's just pretty amazing, but it's, it's a process along the way. Guys, this is, this is Abraham, you know? I mean, he lets his own wife be t taken into Pharaoh's household. And doesn't say a word, all for fear for himself. So again, I just want you to, see, it's, it's an incredible story when you just step back long enough to see, see what's happening, all right? Number four, Abraham damaged his testimony, right? I mean, he's supposed to be a light, you know, he's supposed to be different, he's supposed to be, but he wound up damaging Right, that. But always remember this, just because it's damaged doesn't mean it's beyond repair. It's those things that we learn from the most, right? I don't know, sometimes the most embarrassing things seem to be the greatest teachers, but boy, they're not fun and they're terrible. To be honest, through this circumstance, I think if Abraham was here today, this would be one of his most embarrassing moments. All right, I really do. But I think he learned an incredible amount. Let's take a look, right? So Pharaoh called Abram and said, now you gotta remember who Pharaoh is. Pharaoh is a pagan king. If you know anything about ancient Egypt, it's the tremendous number of gods that they had, right? And they, uh, Ra was the major god, but you take a look at all of them and they were many times, you know, half man, half animal. It was just, it was all this stuff. That's, that's who Pharaoh was. And so he calls Abram and he says, what have you done to me? In other words, Pharaoh was innocent in this one, right? And he looks and he says, what have you done to me? Right? Why didn't you tell me that she was your wife? So, <laughs> I don't know, this is, again, this is, this is a tough one, but this is, this, is, this is a guy just asking the question, why would you do that? All right? Why did you not, why did you say, here we go, why did you say that she's my sister? So that when I, I'm gonna take her for my wife? And so this was the final words that Pharaoh said to Abraham. Okay, now then, here's your wife. Take her and leave. Does that make sense? I don't want you anywhere near me. <laughs> Again, I'd just like you to see it, right? I'd just like you to see it and understand it. This is, this is Abraham. And I, I think embarrassingly, 
He walks out. But I think learning a whole lot along the way. You know, I don't know. It's interesting when you look at things like this and you try to understand them and you stop long enough just to look at really what they say. And so Pharaoh gave the orders concerning him and they sent him away with his wife and all that he had. In other words, they just wanted him to, to, to leave. So the guy who came in town who's supposed to be a blessing winds up being a curse. But remember this, all right? Whenever you're where you're not supposed to be, right? Right? I mean, whenever you're not where you're supposed to be, then you're where you're not supposed to be. I came up with that on my own. <laughs> and I want you to write it down and think about it. I have found that some, <clears throat> some of the most greatest wisdom is in the simplicity. So when you're not where you're supposed to be, then you're where you're not supposed to be. And when you're where you're not supposed to be, you're making decisions that you shouldn't even be faced with. How many times have we told our kids, well, that's not a place you wanna be. Why? Because you're gonna be making decisions that you shouldn't, you shouldn't have to make or either that you're not old enough to, to make them, right? It's just an interesting thing, right? And so Abraham wound up getting to Egypt. He's not supposed to be there. And this is the hard part. You know, when you're not where you're supposed to be and you're praying, oh God, what should I do here? And it's hard to say, well, I don't know what to tell you to do because you're not in the right place. So the difference here is bad or worse, which would you like? Does that make sense? Best thing is to get back where you're supposed to be. Then I ask God, What's the direction here, right? It's just, it's, it's kind of, again, these are just thoughts along the way. <laughs> just thoughts along the way as a believer and how you can practically take these things, right? But a couple of things that wind up, I wanna share with you now while this is fresh on your mind, which when we get there, then won't make a whole lot of sense. But the next couple of weeks, we're gonna talk about a guy by the name of Lot. He was Abraham's nephew. And he was, he was one who left with Abraham and put his faith and trust in God. And eventually Abraham parted ways with him and he gave, he said, Lot, whichever way you go, I'll let you choose, then I'll go the other way. And this was Lot's decision. And I just want you to see just little bits and pieces here. Take a look. And it says that Lot, <coughs> that Lot lifted up his eyes and he saw that the Jordan Valley was well watered everywhere like the garden of the Lord. And he goes on to say, like what? The land of Egypt. Well, how would he know what the land of Egypt was like? Because he'd been living there. And why had he been living there? Because Abraham made some bad decisions. So he exposed people he loved to things that gave him an appetite for something that they had no idea of before. Interesting, huh? I'm not saying that Abraham's total fault for Lot's bad decision, which you'll see later, the whole Sodom and Gomorrah thing, but I will say that he, had a, he, contr he contributed to it, right? Interesting. Now, another thing I want you to see, and this is where we'll close. Uh, well, with some thoughts and uh, have some things to learn, I just want you to remind yourself of. All right, but in verse 16, all right, it talks about... Uh, in chapter 12, verse 16, it talks, I had you underline a phrase, right? <coughs> I had you underline a phrase. And this, this phrase was female servants. So while, so while he's in, all right, I need 12, 16, 13, 16 is not it, right? That'll be next week, right? So in 12, 16, is that Pharaoh gave him a whole lot of stuff. Remember the sheep and the goats and all the different things. And it says, you know, different servants he gave to Abraham. And one was female servants, right? Well, you're gonna find out later that one of those servants' name was Hagar, right? Now, if you don't know the story, I don't know that there's any greater grief that follows Abraham for a good chunk of his life than all the situation and events that surround Hagar. 
which he picked up in a place where he wasn't supposed to be. Right? That doesn't mean that God didn't, get, didn't make good out of it and didn't do all those things that went with it. But again, these are just things that I want you to see. Why? Because they're found in the scriptures and they're there for a reason. Right? It's pretty interesting to think on. Now, as I close, as I close, right? think some things to learn. I have three of them just for you to think on as you walk out of here today. Because my, my, my passion is for you to see and not just learn the facts, but understand how they apply to your life as a believer. If you're not a believer today, that's got to be first, or really all of this, it all comes afterwards. Because you can't learn to trust him more until you first learn to trust him the first time, right? Which is the gospel message, right? But, but as you think on this, all right? Number one, number one. Remain where you are until God moves you. Remain where, <clears throat> remain where you are until God moves you. You know, it's interesting. There are so many things that can cause us, that cause us to, to doubt this one, all right? This is where God has me, right? And I have seen it happen so many times. Fear, which is what happened to Abraham. But sometimes it's not even fear. It's sometimes it's opportunities. Now, sometimes wonderful opportunities that come across your path are, are God's doing and he wants you to follow them. But a lot of times they're not. Let me give you a for instance. Um, it's, it's, it's immaturity to think that, well, this is so wonderful, this has to be God, right? It's just immaturity. You should know, you should, you should learn. You're going to learn, I promise. Not, not because I'm gonna teach you, but because God's gonna teach you, all right? But I want you to understand this. Like, like one time at the previous, at the previous church that I had served before I came here, um, there was this young couple. In fact, the whole church was young couples, but there was this young couple who'd come there in the late 20s, early 30s, and had a couple of small children, right? And, and they, they had been attending the church, right? And they put, their, they put their faith and trust in Christ, and God began to really work in their life. But they were young, kind of like Abraham was here. They were young in their faith. And, and I remember, I remember that, that he got a job opportunity up north and, <clears throat> and, and he was going to take it. And so I stopped by one night because I'd gotten to know them. They'd been, they'd been apart for a couple of years. And I just stopped by just to say, hey, guys, going to miss y'all. Uh, and I said, but I understand, you know, when God moves, you have to kind of follow him where he moves, you know? And so, uh, and his statement was, well, I'm not sure if God is in it, but I'm going to be making a lot more money. All right? Now, for those of you that are younger, it's like, well, then God has to be in that, right? If I'm going to be making a lot more. But if you're older in your faith, you know that warning signs go off. God might be in it, but it doesn't necessarily mean that because, <laughs> because it's so wonderful that God has to be in it. There's a great verse in Proverbs that I quote to you as often as I can. It says to trust in the Lord with all your heart and to not lean to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he'll make your path straight. Right? So I have found that when a situation comes up, Lord, this looks pretty awesome. But Lord, I don't want to go if that's not your direction for me. And then it's his responsibility to make sure that you know. But man, I, <laughs> to tell you the rest of that story, that young couple, they left, they left but I started getting calls a few months later because they, they were in an area that didn't have many churches and, and then they began to struggle and then Marriage began to struggle and then all things began to struggle. Eventually, you know, because God's at work, he taught them. This doesn't have a bad ending. It's just, okay, they're like Abraham. They went wrong direction, all right? They learned in their, in their, in their journey. And, and eventually God moved them somewhere else and they plugged in in a church and they, and they got things going. Why? Because God's not in it for retribution. He's in it to teach you to trust him, right? 
He's in it to teach you to trust him because, because that's, that's, that's what brings glory to who the Lord is. <laughs> and that's the, the difference that's made. You know, I've heard this so many times, so many times. But as a parent, the goal of your life is not to make your children happy. Just like God's goal for your life is not for you to be happy. It's like what you hear all the time. Well, you know God would want me to be happy. Eh, have you read the scriptures? Right? He'd rather you learn and grow. And then you'll be happy. But these quick thrills and synthetic happiness is, is just a psychological gobbledygook. It's not long-lasting. Anyway, remain where you are until God moves you. All right, number two. God, God's in control of your circumstances. If there's a famine where you are, he knows. If you're his, he knows. And not only does he know, right? But it's been my, it's been my experience in doing what I do and working with lots of people and then being a believer myself, right? And then studying the scriptures for lots of years. I think it's a legitimate prayer to say, God, deliver me from the famine. That's what most people pray. But listen to me, he, he doesn't do it often. It's rare when he delivers you from it. Usually what he does is to give you the strength to deliver you through it. Every once in a while, he'll do one of those cool things like, you know, wham, you know, <clears throat> and it, it's awesome when it happens. But that's, that's what the that's what the people who like fireworks celebrate. But when you walk through it and have learned to trust him for the strength to walk through it, you get out on the other end, you're not only stronger, but you know him better, right? If he just zaps you, then you just have a party and then you forget about it pretty quick. But if you walk through it, you're a veteran, right? Again, just want you to hear it. He knows exactly where you are. He knows exactly what's going on, right? <clears throat> Again, I just want you, want you to hear it. Number three, and this is final, where we'll finish. Isn't it amazing that Egypt wound up presenting more problems for him than if he'd stayed in the famine, right? It's, I don't know, it's just pretty interesting to me. I mean, I think at the end... <laughs> after he was thrown out of Egypt, I think he would have said, you know, I should have just stayed where, where I was supposed to be. But that's the way it usually is, but that's how you learn, right? That's how you learn. So as I close today, as if you're not a believer or not sure, then guys, we always like you to know there's an, there's an opportunity. There's an opportunity. If you'd like to talk with somebody right here or you can call if you're watching online. But if you're a believer today, here's what I want you to see. The whole life of Abraham is there for you to learn about your walk with him, right? Last week was Abraham beginning this journey, believing God <coughs> at his word. This week is God almost immediately teaching him. I'm gonna teach you to trust me here. I'm gonna teach you to trust me. Then you're gonna see it happen all along the way. I mean, and rarely, is it what you expect, right? You know, in the Chronicles of Narnia, Aslan the lion says, God never does anything the same way twice. I love the statement because, I mean, those are children's books, but they're powerful if you've never read them, right? But basically, it's usually, you're not gonna be able to figure it out. But in the end, it's gonna go, oh, oh, that makes sense. But can you trust him in the in-between time? That's the powerful part about it. All right, God bless you. Let's have a word of prayer and we're gonna close with a word, with a song. Lord, thank you. <clears throat> thank you so much for today. And thank you for, God, your incredible love for us. And Lord, while we know it's a dangerous prayer, continue to work in our lives, teaching us to trust you 
and trusting you more. Lord, I pray if there's anyone here today that needs to know you, Lord, I pray that you'll open their eyes and let, you, let them see what your promises are. Lord, and that they'll respond today. But again, Lord, this is your time and it's for your glory. And Lord, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you.